Hello everyone and welcome back. It's New Year's Eve today, um, which makes it just about time for my yearly roundup. I think this is the third year that I've done this. And before I start, I would love for you to watch the previous years. I did one in 2016, one in 2017. And I feel like on my channel, you don't really get to know me very much. I kind of stick to certain topics, whether it's, you know, fashion or hauls or something in particular. I kind of give you a little bit of me, but we never really get to have a full on chat. I don't do Q and A's or that kind of thing. And I just feel like at the end of the year it's a really nice time for me to just open up to you have a chat I also take some questions on my Instagram which I did yesterday I got so many I reckon I got like a thousand questions so I tried to pick out some that I thought were relevant and um, that lots of people were asking over and over again but if you are new to my channel this year which can I just say I think there are like 200,000 new people over the course of this year that have joined this channel which is crazy 200,000 I mean now we're at like over 800,000 something, which for me is just such a huge achievement. Like I can't even imagine those numbers in real life. It's just absolutely insane. Um, so if you are one of those new people, I would love for you to check out the previous videos. I'm gonna leave them linked down below in the info box and you can just get to know me a little bit better, how I started my channel, all of that stuff. But today I'm gonna to talk about 2018 and I feel like, you know, I want to be really honest about this year. Um, I don't want to paint this picture like everything was perfect, like it definitely had its ups and downs. I've had some incredible, incredible moments, experiences, opportunities this year that I'm going to talk about, but I also want to talk about some of the low points because, you know, it's real life and I do think that everyone has this image of me and what I put out on the internet that everything's perfect and actually it's not always really like that, it's not like that for anyone. So um, yeah, I'm going to talk about the ups and downs of this year. As a kind of roundup, I would say that 2018 wasn't necessarily the year that I hoped it would be, if I'm going to be completely honest. Although I feel like it was a very necessary year for me. I'm the kind of person, like, I always look for the bright side in everything and keep positive. And I honestly think that all the things that happened to me and have happened to me, you know, in my life have always happened for a reason to get me, like, on the right path. And I 100% feel like that's what has happened this year, even though it wasn't the year that I kind of hoped it would be. If that makes sense, I'm still really happy and feel very fortunate to how everything panned out. And I absolutely feel like now, um, compared to the end of 2017, I feel like I'm more ready. I'm in a much better position, a better mindset, everywhere that I need to be to kind of achieve the goals that I want in 2019, that I kind of hoped to achieve in 2018, or at least make a step towards. I actually watched my 2017 roundup just before filming this, and I have a slight feeling of, um, like I've let myself down content wise on this channel um, and I just want to be completely honest and open about that. Last year in 2017 I started just going wild with all of these crazy creative video ideas, um, a couple of lookbooks like my Pandora Christmas one, my prom nothing to wear lookbook, my character get the looks and I said that I wanted to do a lot more of that in 2018 and you may or may not have noticed that I didn't really do that and that's because I found this year and I'd say it's probably one of my biggest sort of turning points is that I get way way too stressed out over YouTube and I know it's my job it's my full-time job I don't do anything else and I know people question the full-timeness of it all especially as I only do one video a week but if you compare my channels to other channels in terms of the video content I feel like you know my videos take a lot of planning um, I edit them meticulously I don't ever put anything kind of scrappy up the videos are very focused it's not just like a review of a new foundation I would never do that not that there's anything wrong with doing that at all it's just not how I personally like to do things. And also there's so much more that goes into what we do than the video that you see every single week. I mean, I'm essentially running a business single-handedly. Um, I think a lot of people, when they reach my sort of uh, level in terms of workload, they hire assistants or get people to help them edit and that kind of thing. And I haven't done that because I just find it so, like if you guys know me, I'm a Virgo. I'm the biggest perfectionist in the whole world. I'm very controlling, I'm very like, I don't know, I have to be in control of everything. I could never, ever, 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 ever let somebody edit my videos. I just could not do that. I mean, it would literally be pointless because I'd probably send them back a whole list of edits and it would take up even more time. Uh, and also when it comes to an assistant, I just find it really difficult to like, let someone come in and see how I do everything and go in my emails and I don't know, I just find it really odd and I, I'm actually really envious of people that can do that but I just, I just can't. I have to do everything myself and this year it became a lot harder because I actually left my management. So uh, a management is kind of different to an assistant. Assistant uh, helps you with like your day-to-day -day stuff whereas a management will kind of help you with your career, looking for jobs for you, sponsorships, opportunities and that kind of thing. Um, and halfway through the year I 
sort of like severed ties with my management and kind of like went to it alone for the first time ever since I started YouTube. Uh, and that was um, something that I wanted to do for myself. I wanted to see if I could do it, first of all. I wanted to see if I was capable, what it entailed. So many of my friends don't have managers and I just wanted to give it a go. And I really surprised myself. I found that I could definitely do it myself. I don't need to give anyone, you know, a commission for that kind of thing. Um, but what I also noticed is that if I want to further my career in any way, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is going, uh, that I would need some extra help. There are certain things I have, ideas, business ideas, opportunities I want to explore that I can't do if I'm just managing myself. I'm gonna talk more about that um, in a little bit, but the point was that I did have to take a step back from certain videos that were stressing me out to the point of, you know, crying, getting so stressed out that it was practically making me ill, not sleeping, panicking. It's very easy to forget once I've done all the work and I've edited it and it's up and the comments are amazing. Um, it's very easy to forget like how difficult and stressful it actually was um, and sometimes I'm not sure it's 100% worth it because what I realised is I can't always just think about the content. I have to think about me, the creator, the person behind it is a person that has to be happy and somewhat stable <laughs> and I feel like sometimes those videos in the past have made me unstable and I think my family and my boyfriend would vouch for that statement um, and I just had to take a little bit of a step back this year. It's just really really hard. At this point in my YouTube career it's very difficult to think of new ideas that I haven't done many times before that are somewhat new and fresh but still going to gauge your interest because I've talked about this in the past. Striking a balance between uploading something that's new and creative and original and something that I've done a million times before like a haul I'll find that actually my original ideas don't get half as many views as when I do a haul. So the incentive to kind of do something different is like not huge, um, it's more of a personal thing. And in the last few months I have just struggled slightly with ideas just because I've been doing it for such a long time now and I'm very against kind of doing videos just for the sake of it, I'm against doing clickbait titles, you know, I know that I could probably gather in so many views, I could literally reel off a list to you right now of video ideas that I know would get so many clicks like titles I could do, thumbnails I could do, and I just don't want to do it. I hate clickbait, I think it's a really unclassy thing to do personally, I understand why people do it. The YouTube game is so hard right now um, to get views consistently, you know, it is difficult. So I understand why people are resorting to clickbait titles, but I just can't stand it if I'm honest with you, and I'd rather get less views and have all of the content just something that I can be really proud of and I haven't resorted to any tactics. And it's probably to my detriment, to be honest with you, um, because views equal subscribers and opportunities and money. Uh, but I would just rather do it my way because that's just who I am. <laughs> but it is always a huge worry in the back of your mind, like, oh my god, I've got to keep people interested. If I do a haul, I know it's going to get so many views, but then there are also going to be so many people that are complaining and moaning, saying, you always do hauls, da, 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 do something different, and it's just always this mental struggle of, what do I do? <laughs> I've also discovered this year that it's okay to have a week off YouTube. Life doesn't end, people don't really mind. I know sometimes you get a bit disappointed, but you don't hate me, you don't unsubscribe. For a while I thought, oh my God, missing an upload would be the end of the world. Everyone's gonna hate me, everyone's gonna unsubscribe, and it used to just honestly stress me out. I just can't even tell you. I mean, it sounds like I'm moaning and I'm absolutely not. I know I'm so lucky, but I have discovered this year that if I do need a break, whether it's a mental break, uh, whether I can't come up with an idea, or whether I've just got so much other stuff to do, like my accounts or, I'm going on holiday and I actually just want to enjoy myself, that kind of thing. It's actually okay to have a week off YouTube and I think that's probably the biggest thing I've learnt this year uh, and it's just done absolute wonders for me because I just don't feel so trapped. Okay, I knew this was going to happen, I've completely gone sidetracked, so now we're going to start the actual review of the year. So let's start with January. January, February, March, I'd say all kind of merge into one. I was so inspired by the end of 2017. 2017 was great for me. I mean, it really was probably one of my best years. And I was just feeling so inspired for YouTube. Like YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. I wanted to create, I wanted to grow my channel. I was just like, obsessed with YouTube and I feel like I tried out some really cool things at the start of the year. I did these how-to videos like how to um, refresh your style, how to wear uh, 
jeans and be girly, how to stay warm and stay feminine. I did all these cool how-to videos. I also did this like 60s themed stuff. I did a music video with my boyfriend um, on his channel that was really cool. I tried to do a little bit of a different video, which is actually one of my favourite videos that I did this whole year and that was my Valentine's Day guide, where to go and what to wear. I really loved that video, it was very very stressful, um, you know the filming was really painful because it was so so cold but I absolutely loved the finished result and yeah it really kind of tanked, it did not get many views at all, even now almost you know a year later the views are still like I don't want to look. So yeah, again, it's just that constant battle between creativity and views. Um, but I also did my first collab this year in like two years. I think my last one was in 2016. I hadn't really found someone that I really wanted to collab with in a really long time until Josie and I uh, did a video together. And it was just so natural because we're really good friends in real life and we have very similar styles. We love the same thing. So it just felt like the perfect kind of partnership and it was just really fun to film together. I'm not used to it, usually I'm just in my bedroom filming all alone, um, but it was really fun. I don't think I actually went on many trips or anything so exciting um, January to March, but I did do a few really good brand collaborations. I worked with Topshop, I was part of their Topshop Girls campaign at the start of the year, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, it was just so flexible. They literally let us do whatever we wanted. We just had to include Topshop clothes, which is obviously so easy because it's Topshop. Um, so I really, really enjoyed that and I also did did some work with Ted Baker, which you guys know. It's just one of my favourite brands ever since I was a teenager, so it's always a dream come true to do stuff like that. I know people get funny about um, YouTubers and bloggers and influencers doing sponsored work, but I mean, I can only vouch for myself, I can only tell you how it is with me, and I just want you guys to know that if you do see a sponsored post by me, just please don't question it, like, oh, is she being sincere? Is she lying? Is she just saying what she's been told to say? She's just in it for the money. Like, it's honestly nothing like that at all. If you could see the amount of jobs and work that I'd turned down at this point in my life, I could have my dream flat by now, basically. <laughs> I just want it to be completely and utterly genuine. I don't think I've ever really been sponsored by a brand ever, um, even at the very beginning. I think maybe I did one that was like the X Factor that I sort of regret, but that's pretty much the only one. Um, all the brands that I've worked with are brands that I genuinely and truly love and use. Um, because if I was sponsored by a brand that I didn't like, I'd kind of be embarrassed. It wouldn't be a proud moment and I want to be proud of everything that I do. So all of the brands that I've worked with this year, so Topshop, Ted Baker, Clinique, um, Daniel Wellington, who else? Oh. Victoria's Secret, but I'm gonna come back to that. <laughs> I've been insanely proud to partner with, and honestly for me it's actually not about the money at all, which sounds weird, but it's about the prestige and the honour of partnering with a great brand like Clinique is global, Victoria's Secret is Victoria's Secret, Topshop is incredible, Ted Baker I just love, you know, and it fills me with pride and happiness and a sense of accomplishment and achievements and that's what it's about for me, not about the money. The money's a bonus. So now we're in April and April is when I decided to start and it's a decision that I slightly regret, Hall Week. So Hall Week came about because it was starting to become spring. I feel like in England the winter is just endless and I absolutely love spring fashion. So I wanted to do all of these hauls. I wanted to do, you know, ASOS, Zara, Topshop, River Island. I wanted to do all of these hauls, um, but I didn't want to do them every single week because then everyone's just gonna be like, oh, you're just a haul channel, do something different, blah, blah, blah. So I decided to do a haul every single day for one week. And let me just tell you, oh my God, it was the most, Oh, it was the most mental thing. My bedroom was like a warehouse. It was crazy. It was really fun, um, but filming every day, editing every day, you know, doing seven videos in a week instead of one was like, oh, but it was very rewarding. Everyone was literally in love with it, which was just so amazing. The feedback was so good. At the end of it, everyone was like, oh my God, I can't go back to just Freddie once a week. And it was just so nice. So I decided to do it again for autumn in September, which, you know, it was actually a lot better because I was in my new bedroom by then. I've got a lot more space. It wasn't as stressful. Um, but I do think it's only something I can manage twice a year. So I'll think about it, but I think for now it's more of a spring, summer, autumn, winter, rather than spring, summer, autumn, winter. So anyway, back to the year. January, February and March were very much like YouTube orientated, uh, content creating months for me. 
uh, April, May and June, I think, are my best three months of the year because that's when I was going on loads of trips, doing really fun, exciting things and I just had the time of my life in those three months. So April is when I went on my first trip with Gus. We went to St. Petersburg and I just have to tell you a really funny story about St. Petersburg because I was so excited to go. I mean, I've wanted to go to St. Petersburg forever. As you guys know, the obsession with Anastasia is real. But anyway, the night before I went to Russia, which was, uh, I went to Russia on the Monday, so the Sunday evening, I I got invited to the Olivier Awards, which was another huge dream of mine. I mean, it's the Olivier Awards, as you guys know, the theatre is like my life. And um, yeah, I had front row seats at the Royal Albert Hall and it was just an absolute dream come true. I went with my boyfriend, we got so dressed up and it was so magical. But my flight to Russia was at six in the morning. So I had to be at the airport at four. And there was an after party after the Olivier Awards at the Natural History Museum, which is one of my favourite museums in London. But my plan was not to go to the after party. The plan was just to go home after the awards because I had this early flight. But when we were there and we were all dressed up and we were in a really great mood, having a really great time, I was like, oh, let's just go for like one drink because you know, it's the Natural History Museum at night. There's gonna be a huge brass band on the staircase. It's gonna be all lit up. It's gonna be amazing, like a once in a lifetime thing. So we have to go just for one. Yeah, that's how all stories start, don't they? We'll just go for one. It was a free champagne all night. It was amazing. There were so many people I knew there, like from school. And we ended up staying until I think two. I got in at half past two and I had to leave at half past three to get to the airport at four. So I got into bed for an hour and I just lay there awake all night thinking, oh my God, what have I done? Why have I done this? No, no, I'm so stupid. And yeah, it's basically the worst I've ever felt in my entire life. I met my friend at the airport, um, Amy, and I just said to her, Amy, I'm really sorry, but I can't speak. You can talk to me, but I'm not gonna reply. And I literally could not speak to her. I was dragging my feet through the airport. I was so tired, I could not even pick my feet up. <laughs> we got on the plane and it wasn't a full flight and we weren't sat together. And Amy said to the air steward, oh, can we sit next to each other? And he said, well, sit in your seats and we'll work out when everyone's sat in their seats after takeoff, then you can move. And apparently he said to her like two minutes after we'd sat down before we'd taken off, yeah, your friend's passed out in her seat. So yeah, that was me. That was the start of my trip to Russia. I just felt like absolute death, but it was a very good life lesson. Just get some sleep. But Russia was honestly amazing. I had such a great time. I loved St. Petersburg so much. I really want to go back. It was just beautiful. I think it's one of the prettiest places I've ever been to. So I went with the brand Guess, and I'll just talk about this quickly because loads of people ask. Um, I wasn't paid to go, so none of those videos or pictures were sponsored, but they invited me on the trip to go with them. They invite loads of girls from all around the world. So from England, it was just me and Amy, but they had girls, you know, from all different countries basically in Europe and some from America as well. The whole team from Guess were amazing. I think the only thing that I didn't like about it was not so much the other girls as people, but the whole kind of atmosphere is very like looks based. Um, and I don't really hold that against the brand at all. I think if a brand wants to have a certain group of people that look a certain way, like that's their prerogative and that's fine. But it does put you in a strange scenario where you do feel very self-conscious and you do feel very like kind of not good enough comparing yourself to the other girls and there was just an element of that that I didn't like and when I got home I just did not feel myself at all, I didn't feel good enough, I felt like I didn't feel pretty at all, I felt like my body was horrible, I just basically hated myself. Um, but then after a couple of days just being back at home and being normal, like that completely went away and I felt normal again. But that environment really didn't make me feel very good about myself. Um, so although the team were great, you know, the trip was amazing and I did enjoy myself and I'd do it again, a hundred times over. And um, that was an element of it. And I'm just telling you that because I want to be totally honest with you guys um, about these experiences. So when I went away with guests the second time, I just had to kind of keep that in mind and just remind myself of how I felt when I got home and how that feeling like went away very quickly and I had a much better time. But I'll talk about that trip when we get to June because right now we're still in April. In April, I had probably the trip of a lifetime and that was my trip with Clinique. And although this one was a brand sponsored trip, it was by far the best thing I've ever done. I think it's because they let me bring my boyfriend. So instead of going away with a group of strangers, people you don't know very well, having someone there that you love and is close to you, honestly, like made the whole thing just 
so incredible and the girls from Clinique or the whole Clinique team were just so kind and warm and we just had the most incredible time. I mean I love Mexico, I've been there on holiday and I think it's probably my top holiday destination, it's just stunning. So we went to Tulum um, and it was more or less to create content but we did have some nice free time as well. I didn't make a vlog but I did post a lot of photos on Instagram that you probably saw. The best thing we did by far, which is probably one of the most amazing experiences of my life, was get on a helicopter and fly to the Pink Lake. And when I posted this photo on Instagram, everybody thought that I'd photoshopped this lake to be pink and if anything, uh, I actually edited it to be more pastel. It was even brighter than this. It's a completely natural pink lake. I think it's something to do with the algae in the water is like red and it makes the water pink. But again, I just want to talk to you guys about the reality of these things. Obviously that looks like the most perfect image like in the world and we did have a great time but actually when I was there, I just felt this absolutely excruciating, crushing feeling in my stomach of just pressure and anxiety that I had to get a photo. There were so many girls there, I think there were 12 girls there all together who all wanted to get a photo and there was only really one bit that you could go to to get a photo and these girls were like queuing up, taking photos in front of each other and I didn't actually join the queue. I got that photo as we were leaving the Pink Lake. Um, they said, oh, we're going now and I was like, oh my God, I haven't got a photo, please let, let's run, quickly take one. So we quickly ran and took one but the whole time I was there, which was about two hours, I just felt sick because I just felt so nervous and anxious about getting the content because that's why we were there and it's just another reality that I think people don't really think about. These experiences that we get to have are wonderful, especially in hindsight when you look back at the things that you've seen and done. You know, I feel so lucky and grateful, but they do come at a slight cost. Um, I would love to just go somewhere and just enjoy the moment but that's never gonna happen for me. Whether it was a sponsored trip or not, I would never go somewhere that was beautiful and not feel like I had to get a picture for Instagram because that's just my life now. It is a very, very intense, stressful environment to be in, um, but for me, you know, for me it's worth it. And I'm just so grateful to Clinique for that trip because it was just the most wonderful experience for JJ and I to share. We flew first class to Mexico. We had a whole day to ourselves and we went to Excara. I think that's how you pronounce it. If you imagine a theme park, but imagine it's all just about nature and conservation and animals and wildlife. Um, and we just had the most magical, wonderful day. And to be able to include JJ like in my work um, was wonderful because he kind of saw like what it's all about um, and it just made the whole thing so incredible for me. So I'm so, so grateful to Clinique. And then pretty much as soon as we got back from Mexico, we went to Disneyland Paris and I don't know, I think Disneyland Paris could actually rival the Mexico trip for how much fun we had. I think it was May or June that we went to Disneyland, but the weather was literally exactly the same as when we went to Disneyland in California. It was so hot. Um, and we just had the most wonderful time. I think we were there for four days in total and we had these VIP fast passes. We just went on every single ride like a million times. It was like an off peak time as well that we were there. So the park wasn't busy and we had these VIP passes and we honestly just had the most incredible time. And even now we'll look at each other and be like, <laughs> Disneyland. <laughs> And then pretty much as soon as I got back from Disneyland, I went to Madrid for a shoot with Clinique again, which was great. I was so grateful to be working with Clinique again um, because as you guys know, I just love the brand. I love their products. And then I think I only had another couple of weeks um, back at home until I was off again and I went to Lake Como with Guess. So it was my second trip with Guess and I enjoyed it even more actually than Russia. The weather in Italy was so beautiful. We just did the most amazing things. And I actually think that my travel vlogs this year, so my Russia one, Lake Como, and then my New York one um, have been some of my favorite videos this year because I kind of tried to do something a little bit more creative with the vlogs um, and you guys really notice it and comment on how different they are and how much work you can see has gone into them which honestly I appreciate so much and I've said it before but I do get so many wonderful nice kind comments on my channel it's actually overwhelming when I think about it properly um, but my favorite comments to get are when people say I can see how much work you've put into this and I appreciate it or well done or honestly that is the best best thing you could ever say to me because I do like those vlogs oh my god 
a lot of work goes into those vlogs and I really do enjoy it. The editing is very long, but it's very satisfying and rewarding. I just love creating something that's cool and fun to watch. So I do really love those travel vlogs and I love to watch them back. On the flip side, when you're doing travel vlogs in the moment, it can be a little bit sad because you are just trying to have a nice time, but you do just have this constant feeling of being a little bit on edge, always having this like vlogging cloud over your head. Like I can't just enjoy this moment. I have to vlog it. I have to film it. And sometimes you do just want to be in the moment and you can't. And by the way, guys, the reason I'm telling you all of this is not to complain. I don't want anyone to think that this is me complaining or trying to get sympathy or moaning. I'm actually just trying to explain the reality of what I do because I know many people like admire or even envy the lifestyle of a YouTuber. And it is great, like I'm not gonna lie, it is great, but everything comes at a price. And that's just something that I really wanted to get across today. Um, because, you know, you should just know how it really is. Obviously, we're only going to put the good bits out because that's what we do in life, not just social media. But if you've had a bad day, you rarely walk out of the house to work or with your friends crying. You dry your eyes and put some concealer back on and you go out with a smile on your face. That's just the way, that's just the way we are. But I don't want to hide the reality from you. Every great thing that we do, you know, we pay for it in some way or another. It's not a free ride. So yeah, April, May, June were like my exciting traveling months. Um, probably the best months of the year and then we're into July now and July is where kind of everything changed so first of all I basically moved I mean I only moved bedrooms but it honestly felt like moving house because I packed up so much stuff I cleared out so much stuff the transition was really difficult especially when I'm trying to film videos and my studio is my bedroom so for a few weeks I kind of didn't have somewhere decent to film so I was kind of just improvising making the best of it I did a lookbook like on the bare wall because there was no furniture in um, I did loads of clear out videos like clearing out my shoes clearing out my handbag um, I did the room transformation I did like a Bista village shopping vlog because I just needed to do something out of the house so I feel like all of my videos over the summer were very kind of um what's the word I'm looking for I just can't think of it you know they were to do with the situation I was in at the time but basically I was making those videos because that's all I could really do at that point but you guys really loved them I mean the room transformation has nearly two million views from the summer and I know I'm gonna get so many questions on this you're gonna be like Freddie when is your room tour coming I know I promised it to you you know a few months ago but basically the room to me is just not finished I mean it looks amazing I'm looking at my room now and it looks amazing and it's come on so much since the video that you've seen but there's so much more to do like I'm actually getting shutters fitted um, and I haven't found any table lamps and there's just like a few finishing touches that I really need to get sorted um, and then I'm gonna do my room tour honestly I can't wait to do it I'm trying to like rush everything along as quickly as possible but you always have to wait for stuff to be made and blah 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 blah. so yeah it is coming I haven't forgotten I'm gonna do it as soon as soon as I'm ready I have to say that my new bedroom has just been the highlight of my year um, it's been really really difficult for me over the last couple of years filming in my old bedroom basically running a business from this really small bedroom um, was very stressful I had so much stuff I do have more stuff than uh, the average person has just because of what I do I do get sent a lot of stuff I buy a lot of stuff to feature in videos I can't show the same old stuff to you every video because you're gonna get bored so I do have to get a lot of new things um, and you know it takes up space and I was really running out of space in my new bedroom and it was becoming so stressful that I was gonna have to do something whether that was move out which I really didn't want to do for reasons that I've explained but I'll just touch on it um, I know everyone everyone's situation is different all around the world and even the country but for where I am in London um, I really am against renting a flat or a house just because I want to own my flat and house I don't want to spend thousands of pounds basically on a roof over my head which I already have it just makes no sense so um, basically I want to buy a flat and just because of the kind of person I am I don't set myself any limits the flat that I want to get is in an expensive area of London and it is expensive and I want to have as much money to put down on it as possible so that my mortgage payments would be as little as possible and in the meantime my mum and dad I don't really think they want me to leave Coco certainly basically never wants me to leave her um, so you know it just works out all round and my parents did do this for me 
um, but it doesn't exactly like not benefit them at all. Like my sister got to move into my room because her room was basically getting too small for her. It was fine when she was little, but now she's a teenager, she needs a bigger bedroom. And now my mum and dad have a spare room. It's also added a ton of value to their house. I just got so much hate saying, oh my God, you're so spoiled. I can't believe you let your parents do this for you. You should just move out. But it's like, yeah, it did benefit me a lot, but it benefited every single other person that lives here as well. It just did benefit me the most, but yeah. In July, I also had another huge kind of life altering turning point um, that I do want to talk about. And it's when I left my management. It was pretty scary for me because I have always had a manager. When I started my channel back in uh, December 2014, I was already signed to a management company by the following April or May. So basically five months after starting my YouTube channel, which is basically just when it got to be like a real thing. I had a manager, so I'd basically never ever been without one. So it was kind of scary, but at the same time, I felt like a weight had been lifted from my shoulders. And my only regret is that I did not leave sooner. I would go to them with so many ideas of things I wanted to do in my career, opportunities I wanted to explore. And I was kind of met with this attitude of like, who do you think you are kind of thing. And sometimes I would feel like embarrassed telling them what I really wanted. And for people who are supposedly like managing your career, like that's really kind of a red flag. And I feel like many sort of YouTube influencer agencies are solely interested in kind of making the quick buck. So taking Instagram sponsorships, like one-off sponsored videos, this, that, this, that, but there's no longevity. And as you guys know, I'm not interested in the quick buck. I'm really not, I'm interested in like, what can I do with this? Like, to me, it's like my mini empire. Like, what can I do with this? Where can this go? How can we grow this? I don't care about doing a one-off post for a brand. Like, I just couldn't care less. And that was where we were clashing a lot. Um, so when I severed ties, it honestly felt like I felt liberated, I felt free. Um, and it was just like the best feeling. So that summer, which was like alongside my room being done and everything, I was like, I'm taking a break. Like not a break from YouTube, because obviously I still was uploading videos, but just a break from like emails and jobs and just kind of take a little pause on like the business side of YouTube. And I just felt so good and positive and excited. And I just had a really great summer. Uh, but then the summer ended and September came and I feel like this is where I started to just sort of mentally freak out a little bit. I feel like leading up to the summer and over the summer, I had so much momentum. I had all of these trips, all of these jobs to get done where I didn't have time to think about anything else. Leaving my management and having that feeling of like freedom. Um, but then in September, everything all kind of came to a head and it was like, okay, like, what now then? Like the fun and games were kind of over and it was like, okay, you have to get serious now. Um, so yeah, September did my haul week, which was successful. But then again, after that, I was a bit like, oh, you know, I was in this new bedroom and it is really difficult. Like even though it's incredible and for filming, it's a hundred times, a hundred million times better than my old bedroom. But it was kind of an adjustment because it was like, oh, this is a new, this is all new. Like it's all different now. Um, where do I film? I need to find like a new setup and it's all really confusing. And yeah, I feel like my inspiration for videos like died a little bit in September onwards. I'm not unhappy with anything that I've put out in that time period, but I'm not like really proud and excited about anything that I've put out in that time period, which is a shame because up until this point, I've been proud and excited about everything that I've done and put out on the internet. Um, but also at the same time, I feel like I've really stepped up my Instagram. Um, I really put a lot more effort into it and I feel like it's really been noticed. I mean, my likes, my engagement are so high. I don't wanna like show off about that or anything, but so many people are complaining right now about Instagram um, and their likes and their engagement being down and like the algorithm, whatever that even means. But for me, like it just hasn't affected me at all and I'm so pleased with how things are going on Instagram it's a really big platform for us so Instagram wise I'm really happy but YouTube wise I do feel like just my content took a little bit of a dip and at the same time I was also putting a lot of work into Coco's channel so if you guys that don't know my little sister Coco has a channel and I do I'd say a proportionate amount of the work that goes into her channel because she's a kid like she can't edit right now and I am gonna teach her when she's like 14 or something when I think it will actually sink in but for now it's just quicker and easier for me to edit her videos. So what we do is we come up with like ideas together 
when we both have time because I'm really busy, she's really busy. Um, and we like discuss what we're gonna do and then we film it and I film it, you know, I help her film. Obviously like I don't tell her what to say, it's still her, but I'm there just making sure that like everything's all right, that it's still filming, that everything, you know, the lighting's fine. Um, and then I do edit it for her. So um, Coco started getting a lot of opportunities in September. I don't know what happened in September. It's not like her channel blew up in September, like nothing like that. But all of a sudden I'm getting so many emails, phone calls, all these opportunities for Coco. She's just been on Disney Channel. She has been on Disney Channel like every single day from September to now. I think it's over now. But so many really, really cool things. And that kind of took up a lot of my time and a lot of my brain power as well, which I'm really happy about. I'm really happy for her. It is difficult striking a balance between um, Coco's channel and my channel. Um, I love working on her stuff. I find it really fun, really cute. Everything's so colorful and fun and I just really enjoy it. But time-wise, it's hard to manage the two. And I feel like that was something, again, that I really struggled with um, in the last few months of this year because, um, yeah. I don't wanna let her down and I want to make sure that all of her opportunities you know, are fulfilled as well. I don't want to miss out on things for her. Uh, but at the same time, I do have to remember that she's only 12, you know, she's got her whole life and this is my job. So it has been hard getting a balance, but I hope in 2019, I might be able to get a little bit of help with Coco's stuff because I'm not as protective over her channel as mine. So yeah, I don't really have too much to say about October. I kind of just wanna to skip to November because November was one of the most incredible times of my life actually. And that was going to New York for the Victoria's Secret fashion show. So many people were dying for me to talk about Victoria's Secret in this video. So basically this year, I think I found out in April actually, so I forgot to mention it earlier, but anyway, I found out that Victoria's Secret wanted me to be one of their UK ambassadors. If you'd have asked me even back when I started my YouTube channel, which would be the number one brand, like any brand in the world, um, that would be like your dream brand to work with, then it would have been Victoria's Secret. And I probably wouldn't have even said it because it would have sounded very like, yeah, as if you're gonna work with Victoria's Secret, you know, say something a bit more realistic. So when I found out that I was gonna be one of their first UK ambassadors, I was gonna be working with them doing posts uh, every month. They were gonna send me products. I got to go to the show in New York. I was just like, oh my God, I just can't believe this is happening to me. It really was one of the best moments like in my YouTube career. I just had the most amazing time. I love New York so much. So when I found out that the show was gonna be in New York, I was ecstatic. So I always knew from the start that I was gonna to get to go to the show, but Victoria's Secret don't reveal the location of the show until like a month before or something. And I really thought that it was gonna be in London um, because they haven't done a show in London for a few years. And I also thought that's probably why they've got UK ambassadors because the show is gonna be in London. So I wasn't like super duper excited because I thought, oh, it's just gonna be here. Um, and then I was scrolling through Instagram and they revealed, you know, they put this post up that it was in New York and I was like, cool, scroll past. And then like three posts later it hit me and I was like, oh my God. I'm going! And then I just screamed and I was like, I'm going to New York! So um, yeah, it was really good. And I got to take someone. I chose to take my mum with me because New York is like, kind of like our place. We went for my 18th, my mum and I, and we also went for my 21st. Um, and I did feel kind of sorry for JJ because he's never been to New York. But at the same time, do you really want to take your boyfriend to Victoria's Secret Fashion Show? No. So yeah, my mum and I had an incredible time. We flew out a few days earlier than when the trip started. So we had like four days to do our own thing, which was incredible. And then on the day that we would usually be going home, because we've only ever been for four days, uh, we got to stay even longer because that's when the Victoria's Secret trip started. So we got to do like a VS workout with the uh, girl that trains the angels, which was really hard by the way. We had like parties and dinners. Um, we got to go to the store and just go on this insane shopping spree. And then of course the show. I was sat third row uh, behind Kris Jenner who was on the front row, but I was like behind her on the third row. And me and my mum actually spoke to Kris at the after party and she was actually very nice. I have a very good impression of her even though she was wearing like huge black sunglasses in a pitch black after party. She was really nice and it was really exciting because we just love the Kardashians so much. And yeah, the whole thing was just really, really surreal because to me, VS is just like the dream brand for like my whole life, basically, since I was a teenager. It's like Victoria's Secret and I just got to be a part of it. And it was just such an honor and 
like literally probably one of my proudest moments of my life. <laughs> and then that pretty much brings me to December where I realized I had a little bit of a mini breakdown because I was just so overwhelmed by everything that was going on in the December time. It's a really busy time for uh, like YouTubers. Uh, I realized that I was just gonna have no time to enjoy Christmas. And so I made the decision to have a kind of mini break off YouTube for a couple of weeks, um, pretty much just to catch up on everything else I've got to do in my life, like all of my banking and accounts and tax returns and invoicing and actually finding somebody to represent me in 2019 because I realised that that is what I want but it had to be uh, a certain kind of person who, fingers crossed, I do think I found so um, yeah, hopefully 2019 is gonna, is gonna be the year that I kind of wanted this year to be and I'm so so glad I made that decision to give myself that bit of time um, and I just can't thank you guys enough for being so understanding and patient, honestly, I just didn't expect the messages that I got on Instagram, I must have got hundreds, maybe even a thousand messages, um, and I just couldn't believe the response, you are so kind, yeah, I just don't know what I did to deserve so many people who really seem to care about me and look out for me, and it really does seem like you want the best for me, and it's kind of like having an extended family, and it was just really like, overwhelming for me. I mean, I cried and I did put a little story of myself crying on Instagram, which I've never done before because it kind of makes me cringe, but I just wanted you to see that it had affected me in a good way. Um, that I'm not just sat there going, ha ha ha, I get time off now. Like I was so, so overwhelmed and happy and grateful. And I did have a really nice Christmas, you know, I did loads of lovely things. I went to Paris with a brand, but it was just a really relaxed brand trip. It was lovely. Um, I did all sorts of festive things with my boyfriend, had a night out, which I never do. Um, and you know, spent lots of nice cozy time at home. And you know, I'm just so grateful for that. Yeah, it was just a really, really great and uh, a needed way to end the year. So yeah, that's that's my year and breaking it down like that I am proud of the year that I've had uh, there's been some incredible times and there's been some not so incredible times but that have provided me with like life lessons and I do feel like I've grown a lot and learnt from them so now I'm gonna try and quickly answer uh, some of your Instagram questions so how do you be yourself without being scared of other people making fun of you uh, gosh this is something I think comes with just age I suppose and just life experience. Obviously I know people make fun of me. People make fun of me every single day. They go further than make fun of me. People are vicious about me. I think if somebody close to me said, oh, I don't really think you should have done this or that wasn't really your best or something like that, then it would upset me. But honestly, the opinions of strangers, they don't, they just don't affect me. Like it is a really hard one because the only way to not care is just to get over this mental, uh, this mental feeling we all have of caring what others think of us. And to a degree, I care what people think of me. Like, I don't want you all to think I'm horrible. But if there's like one person who's saying some, you know, stuff about me that probably isn't even true because they never met me or, you know, what they think I look like, like, why would I care what a stranger thinks? It's about learning and realizing whose opinions really matter to you. I just honestly don't give it more than a moment's thought because they're probably not gonna give me more than a moment's thought. And if they are, then that's their weird problem. I wasn't gonna answer this one because I wanted it to be relevant to the video, but I just thought it was funny. Um, would you get married in a pink wedding dress? And the answer is absolutely yes. I, as I've got older, I've realized I actually hate traditions. Um, I actually think marriage in general is a really outdated concept and I do want to get married because I think it's very romantic um, and I just think it's really nice that you and your partner are like officially like just this team uh, which I do really like but all of the concepts of like the whole marriage ceremony like the father giving the daughter away and having a best man and only the best man can give a speech at my wedding if anyone wants to give a speech anyone can give a speech, you know? And all of these strange rituals that are from like centuries ago that actually have no real relevance in our day-to-day -day lives. And also I want my wedding to represent me. I've been to weddings and I'm just like, this is literally a beautiful wedding, but it's out of a scrapbook. This could be anybody's wedding. It doesn't represent you as a person or you two as a couple. So if I do have a wedding, I just want it to be like, oh my God, this is the most Freddy thing we've ever seen. So if that means wearing a pink wedding dress, then you know, I'm not ruling that out. I would love for you to talk about how you manage money as a young businesswoman. Right, well, this is, uh, for me, it's simple, uh, save. <laughs> save, save, save. I have been saving my money since I was 
14. Uh, I've always been a saver. I got my first job when I was 14 and I earned two pounds 50 an hour and I saved it for a year to buy a laptop and I've just always had this attitude. I'm obsessed with saving and I know like loads of people are very judgy online and they're like, oh my God, if you stopped buying all of this stuff, you would have had your flat by now and you could move out. And it's like, yeah, you're right, but you're not really right at all because I buy all of this stuff to create content, which I then get money for in terms of views and you know commission clearly it's profitable for me otherwise i wouldn't do it i'm not stupid my main thing with money is really i just save everything that i can um when i get paid i put a percentage of it away in a separate account for tax so that i'm never caught out i'm never going to get a tax bill that i can't pay and it is kind of sad when you've earned money and you have to put some of it away for somebody else you know, is kind of like a bitter pill to swallow, but you just have to disassociate yourself from that money. Like it's not mine, it never was. And that's just the way it is. And I've had that mentality since I've been working from the age of 17. So, um, you know, I am just used to it. My parents are really good with money. So I've always been really good with money. Um, I pay myself a certain amount of money each month um, and pretty much save save the rest of it. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Is the life you share really as exciting and amazing as we see? This is something that I kind of wanted to like explore in this video, which is why I was telling you like the pros and cons of all my experiences this year. Like the answer is no, of course not. I mean, my life is pretty amazing, but you see the amazing bits. So those bits are all real. They're not fake. They do happen. So yeah, like it is amazing, but also it's not like that every single day. There are plenty of days where I'm sat at home doing really boring stuff, um, not glamorous at all. There are days where I get very stressed out, I cry. Sometimes there are days where I feel really depressed. Um, I think everybody has those days. And although my life is amazing, uh, like I kind of explored in this video, everything amazing that I do comes with an attached anxiety basically so it is amazing but it also does have its down points as well how do you manage work with personal relationships you seem so busy all the time girl um yeah my personal relationships um my boyfriend is really understanding because he's really busy as well we come from the same kind of background in terms of like not having this like uh, job that's nine to five, you know, set hours where we have routine. We're both quite similar in what we do, that it's quite, uh, it doesn't really have a routine. And we're just very understanding of one another. And I just try and make time for us to spend together. But if I can't, and I do have too much work, then he just comes round and we work together at the same time, like in my bedroom. Um, so it is quite difficult, but um, it is doable. My friendships on the other hand, um, have taken like a bit of sacrificing. Um, I know who my best friends are and I know that if I called them tomorrow, even if I hadn't spoken to them in a while, like they're still my best friends and it will all be just as it was the last time we were together. But my social life has taken a dip because it's just so hard to keep on top of everything. But when I do go out with my friends, it's like the best thing ever and I have the best time. Yeah, I just have such a great time when I see my friends. Can you talk about dealing with perfectionism? It's so difficult. Yes, uh, agreed. Um, perfectionism, oh my God. I think perfectionism should be classed as some kind of like compulsive disorder sometimes because it is, oh my God, I can't talk about it without getting stressed out. Um, I've always been this way my whole life with everything that I've ever done. Honestly, I think since the age of like five, I've been a perfectionist. Um, but it's even harder when you have this kind of platform where everything I do is a reflection of me. Um, it's my work, it represents me and nobody else, and it's mine. And it just has to be perfect. And there have been times where I have just lost it um, over the slightest thing not being perfect. Whether it's the video or the Instagram picture or an outfit for an event I'm going to, like I do find it really difficult sometimes letting go. So that is kind of tough. And also it's got to the point where now before I film, and it's really weird because I have seen other YouTubers talk about this, um, but I'm so nervous and anxious to film that sometimes I procrastinate so much in the day that I don't start filming till like 9 p.m. because I just get so nervous to sit here and do it. And it's really weird because I never used to be like that bad and I'm scared that I'm gonna sit here and say the wrong thing or forget to say something that I wanted to say. I'm gonna look and there's a hair out of place or you know, something in the background doesn't look right, like the angle's wonky, the lighting's not perfect. I mean, I literally spend about two hours 
setting up for filming, adjusting the lights, freaking out that the lights aren't right. I don't know why I answered this because I haven't really given you a good answer. Um, I'm struggling with it myself. Yeah, maybe I should get back to you when I found the answer to that one. What's your plans for the future? E.g. will you be a blogger forever and ever? Okay, well, I don't really see myself being a blogger, YouTuber forever and ever. If I'm totally honest, I don't see myself doing this like as an adult when I have a family, hopefully. At the same time, I think I always want to keep YouTube in my life, whether it becomes something that's more sporadic, not like an everyday upload full-time thing. I always want to have this platform. I don't want it to just go away one day, but I do hope that I can sort of use my presence online as a stepping stone to other stuff, whether it's a uh, you know, a business, which I do have ideas for, but I don't really want to say, um, because, you know, I don't want to give my ideas away. There are many things that I want to do, um, and I hope that this year, well, this next year, um, I'm going to take some steps towards that to make them a reality. Uh, but yeah, I don't see myself doing this forever, is the honest truth. You've had a lot of achievements this year, and your following has definitely grown. Do you feel more pressured? Yes. So as your following grows, the pressure really grows because you feel like there's so many more people to please um, and it just becomes a lot harder to kind of realise what it is people want to see. Uh, content wise, you know, I've tried, I think this year I've lent a lot more towards fashion and kind of drifted away from beauty a bit and that's because my beauty videos don't really seem to get the most views. So it feels like why am I doing them if nobody really wants to watch them? So that's something I'd love your feedback about um, in the comment section, just what you're hoping to see from me in 2019. But yeah, the pressure definitely grows when your following grows. And I suppose the more achievements you have, if then you go a period of time without having another achievement, you feel like, oh my God, am I doing something wrong? And I just kind of have to try and not think about it too much. Otherwise it would drive me insane. How do you deal with hate comments? I feel so sad for you whenever I read them. <laughs> well, thank you, that's really sweet. Um, yeah. Gosh, well this has been a bit of a journey for me over the last three years. Three, I'd say three years when I've really been getting like hate consistently. Um, I'm just so used to it now that when I get a hate comment on my video, I literally just like, I usually just delete it. Um, if it's like a constructive point, um, then I won't delete it because I don't wanna look like I just delete everything that isn't love but most of the time I'm just a target of other people's anger insecurity sadness and I just don't have time for it so I just delete it and then honestly like I don't think about it ever again I'm just used to it I don't even blink an eyelid like a couple of times someone said something really deep that makes me go like Ugh. but most of the time it's just silly stuff it's just really silly I mean it's mean it's not very nice but it's just silly to me and I'm just like oh you know, I just, I'm so used to it that it doesn't really bother me. It's just words. Um, if someone said something to my face, I think it would, I would be taken aback. But it's just so easy for people to be idiots behind a keyboard. And what people write to me or write about me, it's a reflection on them, not me. Because none of these people know me. Um, and if they did, I'm sure they wouldn't be so mean because I would never be mean to or about a person the way people are mean to and about me. How do you stay so positive? I'm glad somebody asked this because I feel like it is really important to me to have a positive mindset and it honestly changed my life. I actually talked about this in my Instagram story a while ago, um, but just before my YouTube channel took off, I posted an Instagram picture, because uh, you can scroll back through my Instagram to before I was a YouTuber and see some of my real life. And it was a quote saying, an arrow can only be shot by pulling it backwards. When life is holding you back, it's because it's about to launch you into something better or something like that. And it's just so true. I mean, there have been things that have happened to me in the past few years that have been really difficult. Um, I've been double crossed, I've been stabbed in the back, I've had things happen to me that are really not ideal. But I honestly think that all the negative things that have happened to me have happened to put me on the right track, to teach me a lesson, to make me stronger, to make me grow. And when you have that attitude, you can really get through a lot of stuff. And in general, if you just try and look at the bright side of everything, you'll find uh, that life will just become so much better and happier. What are some of the cons about being a YouTuber? Not many people usually talk about this. I think I've talked about them a lot in this video, but I think uh, the main one is how your personal life is so so uh, like integrated with your work life um, and it's really hard to draw the line which is why um, I don't vlog very often um, I don't vlog at home in London I don't vlog my day-to-day -day life because that's just a line that I can't cross right now because I just need to have some separation it's also why I don't really put my family in my videos or my boyfriend I don't pretend that they don't exist you know my mum was in my New York vlog JJ was in my LA vlog like if they're there 
and it makes sense for them to be in it, then I'm not gonna like pretend that they don't exist. But I kind of don't want to give too much of my personal life away to everyone because then it's like, what's left for me? What's left that's just for me? And it's really hard because sometimes that's the things that people want to see the most, but I just have to have that separation, otherwise I think I'd go mad. Um, and then the other thing I'd say that is the biggest con is just the pressure is honestly indescribable. When you are your own boss and you're responsible for everything you do, that's a massive pro because it's obviously great. You can decide what time you wake up in the morning and you can decide everything. But it's also very, very difficult when you're handling, you're handling everything. Your whole life and career is in your own hands which is just scary, it is difficult. You put a lot of pressure on yourself, you feel guilty every single moment that you're relaxing, you know, and not doing something. If I go on holiday, like when I went to Lisbon with my family, I just couldn't really enjoy it fully because I was so anxious about getting Instagram pictures. We went out into the city and I was just looking around the whole time thinking, okay, where could I get a picture? Where could I get a picture? And it just put me on edge to the point where I stood there and my dad said, what's wrong? And I just burst into tears because I was just so pent up and like on edge the whole time, like Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. And it's something that's really, really hard to turn off when it's your life, like this is my life. So it's impossible really to turn off. And when you do turn off, if in Lisbon I did make the decision to not take any photos, like I'm not even gonna look, I'm not taking any photos, I'm going to enjoy myself. I would have just felt guilty and upset the whole time looking at everyone else's great, you know, travel photos. And oh my God, I just missed an opportunity. I'm so stupid, why did I do that? So you have this constant battle with yourself and, um, and it is really hard, but I'm, you know, I'm only saying that because you asked, I'm not complaining. Why do you always portrait, I think they mean portray, your life in such a perfect way? Life isn't always that perfect. I don't think I do do that, to be honest. I upload one video a week that's usually topical. I don't really show my life. I do believe in putting your best foot forward and being the best version of yourself and saving the worst bits of yourself for when nobody can see. But that's just me. Um, and I do think I'm pretty open with my audience about my life. And to be totally honest, you know, my life is close to perfect. Nobody's life is perfect, that's impossible. But you know, there's nothing that I'm dissatisfied about in my life. So you're not gonna catch me like moaning, complaining about life stuff, because I've honestly got nothing to moan about. So if that's portraying it in a perfect way, then that's what it is. Okay, this is officially the longest video I've ever done, so I have to wrap it up here, but thank you so much for watching. It actually feels really good to have this like heart to heart, get things off my chest and actually talk to you guys. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of your support this year. Honestly, I do try and thank you here and there, but I'm not sure I do it enough. I appreciate every single time you click on my video, write a lovely comment, uh, like my Instagram photos, leave an Instagram comment. It just, you know, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. So thank you so much. And yeah, I'm just excited for this year. I hope that you will stay with me and I hope that you all have an amazing year as well. Bye.